Um, so I, this is gonna be more of like your learning and I don't want it to be like a boring science lesson, but there is gonna be a lot of like hormone talk and like really nitty gritty science talk, but I'm gonna kind of fly because it's not meant for you guys to remember this. It's, I'm not gonna test you later. It's just, I'm gonna, I wanna give you guys the framework. Um, also in your folders, there was that MTAF form. If you did fill it out, we will go through that. It's really interesting, I'll explain it. Um, and then, yeah. So first thing I'm gonna start with is, I am gonna read a little story. I was joking with them up here. I am not like Sarah who's amazing and can memorize everything, this is mine. <laughs> so I'm gonna read this little story that I wrote about my own life and it's, um, it's not, it has to do with functional medicine and how I got here. But to give you guys background, um, I want you guys to think right now about somebody who you, I don't wanna say envy, because envy is a very you know, negative kind of word, but somebody that you look at and you're like, God, I really want their life. Like, I really want what they have. I want their, their stuff. I want their travels. I want their, their house. I want this and that. And then turn it to yourself and think, why can't I get there? Like, what's holding me back? And years ago, I was that person, and it was actually one of my own best friends that I envied. It was my friend Elizabeth, and my sister and my best friend know that. I, I like loved her life, and it wasn't in like a like negative way. I just was like, oh my God, she does all these things. And I asked her one day, I was like, how did you get there? Like, what do you do every day that got you to this like amazing life that you built? And she told me, and she, it's similar to kind of what happened to me, but I'm, I mean, pretty similar. But, and she, she told me, and she just said, you know, you just reset your life one day. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna do it, and I did. And now I have this, I, I, we've built this life, I should say, not just me, but at Inspired and then in personal world that I every day get to wake up and kind of pinch myself. And I, the reason I'm telling you guys that is that I want everybody in this room to have that life and no pun intended, but inspire that life that you can get what you put your heart out to get and you can, you know, you, you can really go after what you want with your health and your personal life and you know, get through that trauma and get through that tough time and arrive at a place of just peace. So I'm gonna tell this little story. It's not really a story, but it's just what happened to me. So I feel like my feet are stuck on the floor, like I can't move around. It's like I'm constantly walking through mud. I feel like my thoughts are moving through jello. My hands are weighed down, I can't lift my arms. I hear thoughts and I hear noises, but I can't quite make any sense of them. Yet here I am sitting in an upper level education classroom in Chicago, studying for my doctoral degree as a high achieving human being with a large social group, a wonderful boyfriend, who's now my husband, a supportive family, safe home, and a wonderful life. But the weight of the world is on my shoulders, quite literally and physically. I feel so heavy and tired all the time. It's 2017 and I'm midway through my graduate experience and I feel like I might not be able to go on any longer with the current life the current day-to-day -day life that I've built. But this is a familiar feeling for me, this feeling of dread and wonder of how I'll move through my day-to-day -day being. I felt like I've been climbing this mountain and climbing and climbing just to see my highest achievements and to be able to look at them and reflect, but all I see is a graveyard at the top and there's nothing there at the end. I just feel like a bag of bones, helpless, with nothing else to give out to society and how am I supposed to heal people all day when I feel ill, tired, depressed, and hopeless? Um, my mom can attest to this. I would call her every day, I'm so tired, I'm so tired, I'm so sad, I'm so tired. Just as slowly as these feelings have crept in since I was around 16, I slowly begin to unfold them. In this moment in this classroom, I had a breaking point and I realized enough is enough and I'm ready to break free. It's not until I talk to my friend, Elizabeth, and colleague about everything that I'm feeling on a day-to-day -day basis and that my mind and body realizes how crucial it is that I drastically need to change. The wake up calls start to come forth when I begin to work with both a functional medicine doctor and a therapist and understand why I feel so sad and ill all the time. Even though everyone look at me, looking at me would say, oh, you're happy, you're fine, you have this beautiful life. And don't we all do that? We all look at somebody and say, oh, you're fine, from Instagram and pictures, but that's not the case. I begin to understand that this heaviness I feel is not only a mix of physical disease that I didn't know about, but also emotional trauma. After a severe case of mono, as well as surgery on both feet at the same time when I was 16, my body just never really recovered and knew how to heal. I was then put on antidepressants due to misdiagnosed anxiety. I never actually had anxiety, but I'll get to that in a second. 
I then started birth control as most young women do and probably most women in here are on. And I just had a life of normal activity, but I was eating as a vegetarian and no habits that were actually what I needed for my body. I realized that I had a mix of childhood traumas to chronic stress to a dear friend of mine passing away when I was just 20 years old. To the feeling of the burden of being a perfectionist my entire life, striving to get all A's, having a perfect body, social life, becoming a doctor, so on and so forth. Um, Courtney calls it performance addiction. You know, you just keep going and going and going. It's like the rat race never ends. I finally put it together that these experiences not only shape me, but they've quite literally worn me down to have zero excitement about my life. So then, after talking to Elizabeth, I begin envisioning this life of freedom, freedom from the way my body feels every day and freedom from the thoughts that I have that are weighing me down. And I wanna finally live, not just be alive. So, fast forward to spring of 2019 when things begin to shift. I'm able to look out to see new smells, like smell the earth every day and actually feel the ground below me. I can see the beauty and the sunshine every day and I hear sounds that I have never really heard before. I begin to feel life again. And I was actually living back in Cleveland. I had just moved back. So I don't know, maybe it's Cleveland. Maybe Cleveland did it. Um, so that was spring of 2019. And that also was when I, I can't talk about it for many reasons, but I had a very toxic job, a very, very toxic job that ruined my life for a, a long time, and I, it was pretty terrible. And that fall is when I met Sarah, because that time frame from spring to fall is when I finally put work in. And I'll say how I did that and what I did. But that, that fall night when I walked in that room, I finally felt alive and I was with women that clearly that, you know, you feel that room vibrate and you're like, wow, this is like what I want to be with and I, I want to change and I want a different life. And I, and Sarah, like we just, she, we clicked and I, and she said, do you, do you like where you're at? And I was like, no. Like I was like so shy. I was like, I hate it. Like I effing hate it. And I, I did. And she was like, well, come with me. And I was like, okay. And I was like, okay, what do we do? We yeah. I was like, all right. And that is probably, I mean, that is the breaking point of, well, I don't, that's not a breaking point. That's a good breaking point of when my life changed completely. And not to sound corny, but, corny, but inspired literally changed my life. And it is my lifeblood passion every single day. I wake up every day. It's probably one of the first things I think about in the morning. And that is probably one of the things I think, the last things I think about before going to bed because I'm so passionate about this work and about these people and about what Sarah's built with Inspired and with my coworkers and what we do every single day. And man, do we get tired and man, do we get overwhelmed, but it's worth it because we want to help every single person in this room. Um, so backwards, how did I do this? What did I do? So it all started with a deep thought work and organizing my feelings and emotions of where I wanted to focus the trajectory of my life. I put in hours of journaling and writing and just meditating and figuring out where I wanted to go and what I needed to do to change my life. And I, cause I knew I was 26, I think. And I was like only 26. I'm like, I have to change my life. Like this is miserable. I did intensive functional medicine testing. I did a stool test, a hormone test, extensive blood work, which I'll talk about. I began a very strict elimination diet with the most attention to all of my sugars in my diet and everybody that knew me at that time knew I was crazy about it. I wouldn't even like look at a date. I'd be like, I can't even have that. Like I was, I was extreme, but it helped because I had to do it for a short time. I took supplements and still do like Sarah said, I probably take, I don't know, probably like 25 a day um, in order to heal my gut because we found a massive yeast overgrowth and massive infection in my stomach. This yeast was probably causing brain irritation and it was causing body aches and fatigue. And as soon as I fixed my gut, I can honestly say I've never felt tired again in my life. Of course I have day-to-day -day tiredness, but it's gone, the fatigue I had forever. Within six months of this drastic change, my entire world changed. Um, I started to feel like a new human being with that weight lifted off both physically and mentally. A year prior, I was able to remove the antidepressant because I knew I wanted to. And I also pulled myself off of my birth control because I started reading books. If you guys have ever read Beyond the Pill, please do. That's like the most moving book about birth control. Um, and come to find out my anxiety and depression was actually correlated directly to when I started my birth control. And as soon as I got off both of them, it was like 
I'm fine. I, I never, I, those haven't returned ever since. So those symptoms never returned. So there's a correlation there. So I also started a very routine treatment plan of acupuncture, saunas, chiropractic adjustments regularly, and more importantly, mind, all in the mind every single day. I keep meditating daily. I work with various coaches and therapists, and I have never stopped and never will. I promise I'm almost done with this, then we get to this part. I started to move my body daily, but it wasn't just a run here and there, just you know, going out and going to a workout class. It was based on my cycles. It was based on what I felt like that day and what, based on where I was going later that day, what I could eat. It's very, very intentional movement. Um, I cleaned up my products. I, just, I threw out all my makeup. I got rid of all my cleaning products. My husband, like I remember him staring at me and um, wait, no, we were in Cleveland. He's like, that is perfectly good stuff. And I was like, no, it's not, it's going in the garbage. <laughs> So I got rid of everything. I also removed a lot of stressors from my life, and I realized the people that I needed to be around um, more consistently. A lot of negative people you know, that were bringing me down, I would keep at arm's length, and the people that I love the most right here. Um, if there is a stressor, I now learned and I know how to navigate it through the help of the coaches and therapists that I've had. Um, I also began and continue to plan routine vacations and trips. Anybody who knows me very near and dear knows that traveling is my lifeblood. Um, and I, I put that in my schedule. Every January I sit down and I plan out my year because that's what brings me joy in life. And find that for yourself. Find what gives you joy in life and do that for yourself. Um, I plan volunteer trips across the world. I went on solo trips by myself to Asia, South America, Africa. I just left and went to explore and to expand my mind. Every single week, I spend one hour planning out the next week and putting in intentions of what I hope to get out of that week. And I do it every single week. And if I miss it, I am so thrown off and I do not miss it for the world. Every single day, I do the same thing. I look at what I'm set for that day and I, I do it. And it's a lot of work, and even, like I said, some of my, my husband and some of my friends are like, that's so much, but it, it's how I created the life I have. And now, my friend Elizabeth says to me, how did you do that? So we kind of switched roles, and it's, it's so cool to be like, well, don't, don't do that to yourself. We're not comparing, but it's to inspire you and build you up. Um, and it's to say, okay, what else can we do? And we never stop. Um, and was it easy? No way, but you guys are all capable of it, and that's why we're here. We are here to inspire you. We're here to lift you up, and that's, that's what our life goals are. And if somebody ever said to me, you have to sit behind a cubicle forever and just not con communicate with people or connect with people, I would be miserable. I mean, that's, that's the thing that we care about so much is we care about you guys. So there's my story, just more like inspiring and in how I got here. And then now we'll jump into the science side of things. And if you guys, like I say, if you get like hot, bored, whatever, I don't care. <laughs> go, you know, get food, go step out. I seriously don't care because science can sometimes go like this over people's head. But I want to give you guys the framework of this um, stuff. And I will keep it. Honestly, it shouldn't take too long. So just to give you guys an idea. Okay. So you guys did that. Okay. So Sarah kind of talked about this. So. Um, the Institute of Functional Medicine is like this mega institute that was create, created but, um, and founded years ago. Functional medicine is only about 30 to 40 years old. So we don't really know, you know, we, we do know who, found, like who created it and who founded it, but it's a very young practice of medicine. Um, and it's all based on this. It's based on your life timeline. So when this is the timeline of you, and I obviously don't need to read all these off, but this is what happens to you guys with hormones, um, specifically. So everybody in here, I think, can relate to different parts of this. Um, and it's kind of moving to be like, wow, like especially for whoever's in that area, mom, there's, <laughs> there's um, this is where, you know, it's just so cool to look at like, wow, my body did all of this stuff and it's so beautiful and you've got to keep it Keep it going and keep it healthy. Oh, oh dear. Okay. We're just going to go like that. Okay. So, right. <laughs> right. Because I like that. This is a myriad. And honestly, if you guys look at this, you guys probably can say most people probably have, I'd say, 80% of these. Um, so, 
kind of just, those are the signs we listen for. And when we hear these, like when people come in and talk about these, it's like, okay, it's all connected. Just spitfire them. We'll, we'll keep, we keep track. That's our job. So this is where I'm going to kind of fly through these. There's a lot of main hormones. Um, and you guys have probably heard of a lot of them, but you don't know what they do. So progesterone is probably my favorite hormone. It's the mama of all hormones. This is the one that stimulates the uterus to prepare for pregnancy. Um, but also in menopausal women, it's the first one to fall. And it causes anxiety. It causes hot flashes. It causes the nasty symptoms of menopause. Um, so this one is the one we, we kind of care about the most. There's estrogens. So did you guys know that there's actually three estrogens? Who didn't know that? Yeah, most people don't. Um, so there's estradiol, there's estrone and estriol, different forms um, for different reasons. Um, estrogen is kind of the one that gets all the attention, but it's really not, it's very important, we need it, but it's actually not like the most um, important. Progesterone kind of takes the cake. Um, this one helps more with egg growth, and then obviously we all know estrogen as far as like, this is the one that gives most people cancers, the nasty cancers is estrogen-derived cancers. Um, and it is in males as well. And then there's testosterone, with Dr. Sarah kind of talked about that one too. Um, this one helps a lot with the mind and depression. So that's a very, very, very important one. There's FSH and LH. So anybody in here who's gone through um, any fertility issues at all knows these very, very well. This, you get these tested left and right. Um, they, they both have very, very intricate um, mechanisms to help with fertility, but they also are in males as well. Cortisol, so who has heard of this one? Okay, good, most people have. Okay, so this is a steroid hormone and it's produced by the adrenal cortex. So it's a little gland above your um, kidneys and it regulates a stress response. And who has also heard of adrenal fatigue? I feel like most people have. And also if you haven't until now, it'll now pop up on your Instagram, it'll pop up everywhere because you're, it's, it'll be like, yeah, are you adrenally fatigued? So my, like medicine like at, you know, let's say Cleveland Clinic and UH, they'll say, oh, that's not a thing because your adrenal glands are still functioning completely fine. There's no tumor, there's no disease going on with your adrenal glands. But I use the analogy of it's like the little engine that could. Your adrenal glands can only put out cortisol for so long, which is your stress hormone, and then it shuts off. So this is the, um, the kind of thought process behind it, is that on a cellular level, we all have stressors, but they could be good or bad. So like. Tonight, this was like an amazing, like it wasn't even a stress, but an amazing thing to keep track of, like an amazing stressor. So is losing a family member. Two totally different spectrums, a good stress and a bad stress, but our body doesn't know the difference. Um, so it perceives everything the same. So the problem is, I already said that. The problem is, is that this is a study that elevated cortisol for extended amounts of time to a stress response actually cause exactly the opposite effect of what it's supposed to do. It causes inflammation. It impedes the body to repair itself. It causes a blood sugar dysregulation. It causes weight gain, um, anxiety, mood, exhaustion, all of that um, nasty stuff that we know of. So like I said, essentially with this chronic stress, the body becomes cortisol resistant. Also like insulin resistance. Have you guys heard of that? Most people have, most Americans have. Um, same idea. So it's something that we probably care about maybe the most in our office. We probably talk about cortisol the most. Um, 